EMS World Expo is the largest EMS dedicated event in the world, and it's taking you places. And now we bring you stories from Expo. Hello everybody and welcome to the EMS Garage and the stories from EMS Expo 2019 here in New Orleans. I'm Chris Monterio, your host, and today we're joined by Ben Vernon and he just gave probably it was a very riveting podcast or a very riveting keynote as a part of Ed Rock's show. Yeah. Um, so tell us what happened. Um, so June 24, 2015, I was uh, running a medical aid with my crew, a call we'd run a thousand times before, every right. EMS person has. A drunk, intoxicated male at a trolley stop. Um, a bystander started a fight with a security guard that was kind of overseeing and, and keeping us safe. And so I jumped in to break up the fight and I separated these two men and the bystander pulled a knife and started to stab me a bunch of times. So, so be, okay, so, be, <laughs> so you would assume it would be the guy that was drunk. Right, is, I right, mean, so right. Why, why, what was in his mind at that point thinking he should be stabbing you? Right. And what, what was going, did he ever, did you ever find that out? Yeah, so I did it, but that's the perfect uh, segue is, I didn't know. I had right. that exact like, what is happening? Why are right. you, why are you trying to kill me? Like, what's going on? And then, of course, I find out months later in the trial, like, I get to see the video and I get to see all the things that led up to that fight. And and this bystander and security guards had been picking at each other for like 20 minutes prior to our arrival. And so, as we arrived, these two started kind of going at it again. And then this fight breaks out, and we'd only been on scene 90 seconds. Wow. So it, it turns out that the bystander was an ex-felon, uh, just an angry man uh, who had actually learned how to knife fight in prison. So I was prison shanked, which I actually kind of think is pretty cool that I survived <laughs> a prison shank. I don't know if that, uh, okay. Or I know, yeah, you just gotta go with it. Right. But um, so I learned a lot way after the event and, right. and it's such a great example of, you know, we're on calls and you were walking in in the middle. Right. We always think we're walking at the beginning. Right. We're not, right? That 911 call, what led to before the 911 call? Yep. During the 911 call, we're responding. We're coming in at the middle. And that, if, if I could, I've learned so many things since my event. But that's one is we think that we've arrived and now we begin. And it should be we have arrived, here we are in the middle. Right. And that's a very costly lesson. It almost cost me my life. But well, it, it did. But then I think the, for me, the, the story of resilience behind that and what you, um, I'm a paramedic, been there hundreds, hundreds of times um, where patients were violent with cops on scene or whatever and you're just like, all right, either I jump into this or or that guy gets hurt. Right. So, but how did you, so your story of resilience after that was very, that was a very touching. How, what, what happened? How did you get through that? Yeah, so I almost didn't make it. First, I was almost murdered on scene, but right. then the, the one thing I was not prepared for was the aftermath. Um, I healed physically pretty quickly, and my sure. thought was, well, when these wounds heal and the stitches come out, I'm going back to work. Um, when the wounds healed, the nightmare started, mm -hmm. and I mean, they were horrific. I would they're visceral you know right. these are not your normal nightmare like i could i could see clear as day i could smell i could taste oh. and i would fight this guy every night in my sleep and we would murder each other i would rip this guy apart and i'd wake up screaming and that started every night for for weeks and i without sleep i unraveled pretty quickly and sure. i consider myself very mentally strong and mentally tough and and i was surprised at how quickly i could unravel right so that started the journey of, okay, well, I need to get help for this. Um, our, our culture in EMS is, you know, you don't ask for help, you handle your stuff. So I had to kind of fight that. I was helped that the whole event was caught on tape. It's right. very visceral, very real to watch. Right. It's very, it's intense. Right. Well, I'm hoping uh, at some point I'll probably put that in this video. Yeah, and I'll share it with you. I think, because I think that people need to see that how quickly it happened. Oh, my was, goodness. Was a second. Oh, uh, yeah. So two men, I got stabbed twice. My partner jumped in to, to protect me. He got stabbed three times. That whole fight lasted less than three seconds. It was over before I'd even knew it started. Right, right. Um, before I'd even realized I'd been stabbed, I'd already been stabbed twice, and my partner had already been stabbed three times. And then I figured it out. Um, 
Yeah, so the, the nightmare started and then I started this journey of getting professional help and that didn't go well either. Right. Um, and, and I've realized that there are a lot of mental health professionals that are amazing at what they do, but they don't specialize in trauma and right. first responders. So I, and that's one thing, you know, I've traveled the country, I share my story. I get to meet first responders from all over the country. That's a common theme is, right. okay, I broke down and I thought I'm actually gonna get help at risk of my, my, um, Ego, employer, whatever. Yes, yeah, right. At the risk all of, the of that yes, go my head. yes, I get it. right. Yep. You, I'm going to go against the mantra, and I'm going to get professional help, and then the help we get is not helpful. Agreed. So after I, I had a couple therapists that were terrible, and no fault of their own, I it was almost suicidal. Like I was like, if I can't fix this, I'm I'm going to end it because I can't do this anymore. I can't not sleep one more night. Right. You're just living in your own head. Right? Yeah, exactly. And and it's amazing how fast without sleep you just everything comes apart. Are you? Uh, do you have a spouse? I do. And how did, how did that, that go? did not go well. Yeah. Um, I was too in my own world of hurt to notice her. Right. It wasn't until much later that uh, I found a really good therapist, good. gave me great care. Uh, we did a thing called the EMDR, and if, if no one knows what that is, you yeah. have to look it up. It's right. amazing. So we did an EMDR therapy. I felt great. Uh, and then it was a, this really good therapist that said, hey man, now that you're good, now you got to take care of your wife. Good. And I was caught off guard by that, to be honest. Oh, I was right. like, she She's didn't fine. get right. she didn't get stabbed. Like, what are you talking about? And and of course, as soon as he had me face my focus on her, I realized she was not in a good place either. Well, she's watching the person she loves unravel. Unravel, right, right. Oh. right. And she got. We found this out later. She told me, you know, she had mentally prepared for ten years every day. I went to work to get a call from the chief, uh, but then to get the call was more than she could bear. <laughs> so. Oh. Yeah, you're making me choke up talking <laughs> about my wife. <laughs> but yeah, and she actually got the call and then and then was on this journey with me whether she liked it or not. So uh, we we both ended up going to get good care and now I think our relationship is stronger than ever. That's awesome. How about your how about your partner? How did how did your partner do? Uh, so my partner struggled as well. Um, we kind of went two different routes. I I went down the therapy route. I got tons of good care right. and I'd say I I'm stronger now than I was before. Sure. And I, I love him to death, but he's he's trying to tough it out like a tough guy, and I feel like he's not nearly as well off as I am. And so I I don't want to pester him, right, right. but I, I occasionally go, hey man, have you tried going to therapy? Like, right. you know, stop trying to do this on your own. So, um, yeah. Well, and I've seen a lot of the peer support systems where, um, I know in our community we're trying to, they've been trying to start a peer support group, but a lot of it is just that checking in, like, right. hey, heard you had the call how you doing right. I, and, it, and it may and it may just be the one time you ask where they're like oh I'm, it's right. bad you know right. or whatever and so that's that's so important so what did you what did you do to once you now you're out of it yeah um, you still live with it right but now that you've um, kind of come out of the other side of that what have you done to help people in other organizations yeah so um my department actually did a lot without me. They knew I was hurting. I was very upfront with them and told them that I was struggling. And so my department really rallied around me and started building a mental health program um, without me even being involved. And one thing we did is we went back and recreated our peer support team. We'd had one and then it kind of dwindled and then had one and dwindled. And this time it came back with a vengeance. Um, so they started that, and then one thing I requested was more chaplains. We have one amazing chaplain named Mickey Stonier. But there's a thousand of us in my department. And so I, the one thing I asked for is, can we have more chaplains? So we went from one to 18. Holy cow. Yeah, so we have 18 chaplains that are running around on engines now and they're getting a lot more contacts, which is great. And then the professional that helped me get back to work, my department went out of their way to get a contract so that my entire department could see him and his team. And when that, when word got out that there were these therapists that were really good that helped first responders, 10% of my department signed up. Wow. 10%. Wow. A thousand of us, a hundred yeah. immediately went. That's amazing. And, and the one thing I try to tell with other agencies, you think my agency is different than yours. Right. I'm telling you right now, if 10% of my department was hurting, 10% of your department is hurting. And so it's it's being aware that, that it's out there, right? There are problems. Um, so there's that. And then my favorite thing ever, We're five, minutes. five minutes. Okay, five okay, minutes. Okay, minutes more. <laughs> my favorite thing is, uh, we created what's called Family Wellness Day, and we thought the best mm. way to change a culture is you got to start with your youngest guys, right? Youngest guys and gals. Yep. 
how did we get firefighters to wear BAs? Well, we trained them in the academy. Right. And then those poor guys that came out, the first ones ever, the whole department's laughing at them. Right. But 30 years goes by and now your chief right. is wearing a BA and the new guy's wearing a BA. Right. So we thought if we go after the youngest guys and gals and we create a family wellness day, we bring in therapists, we bring in these recruits and their families, nice. and we just have an eight hour, like, let's talk about mental health day. Right. Um, I've taken all of that information and I erased San Diego on so that, and I just put, put your department name here and I've shared it with EMS World so that anyone can go and look at the blueprints and then hopefully take it back to their department and, and we'll slowly change the culture one recruit class at a time. Ben, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that you're, you know, I think the analogy of a broken bone is kind of that, you know, it, it's broken and it hurts, but as it mends back together, it's really strong right at that break. And, that's what you've done. And awesome. So how can people find that information? Is it on the EMS World website? It is on the EMS World okay. website. Uh, my own website is www.benvernon.com. Um, and I'm happy to travel all over the country and share my story. And That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank awesome. you so much. I Thanks for having it. me. Yes. And thank you all for watching this Stories from Expo and the EMS Garage. I'm Chris Montero with Ben Vernon. And we just had a great story about resiliency and how you can overcome adversity in yourself. Join me for more stories on the same channel.